Previously I showed you video in which flying attendant talking about the most terrifying things about aviation which she learned when she become a flying attendant. And uh, in the previous video I tried to explain why the first part is not really true. And if you haven't seen it yet, link to it is up here or lately you can find it in the description. And today I would like to take a look on the second part of that video and again explain how it is in reality. So let's take a look on it. Speaking of maintenance, I don't think you guys want to know how many things are broken on an airplane that maintenance will literally defer for the next flight or the next time they're in their maintenance hub. AKA, if they tell you the reason that your flight is delayed is because they need to fix something really quick on the flight, they're probably not fixing it. They most likely got a random maintenance guy to come in and sign off on it to say that they could still fly the plane. I can personally testify this after they made us fly a plane with a broken slide on it. You know, those blow up slides that are supposed to inflate during an emergency crash? Yeah, it was broken and we still had to fly a plane. Not to worry, we still made it on the ground safely, but to this day, I really don't know if that side was ever fixed or not. Yes, it is true. Parts of the airplane can break or can stop working. In the end, it is just a machine. But question is if with that broken part, airplane can fly. And it always depends uh, if it is essential for the flight or for safety or not. Or if it is uh, backed up once, maybe twice or not. And all those information you will find in document, which is called minimum equipment list. This document is released by manufacturer. And in that list, we'll find all those information. If we can release airplane with that malfunction system or not, what does it mean for the flight? Most probably there will be a limitation. And the biggest limitation is time. How long this airplane can fly with this malfunction? Of course, uh, it can be longer period of time or if it is essential, as I said before, it is very short time. As example, we can take a slide about which this flying attendant is talking about. Each passenger door are equipped with uh, such a slide and these slides are essential for quick evacuation. And if one of those slides are inoperative, it means downgrade of the time in which airplane can be evacuated, which means that you need to reduce amount of the passengers. We can take a look, for example, on airplane like A320. Inside of this airplane, you can have up to 180 passengers. And if one of those slides are inoperative, this number will be reduced to 110 passengers. And if you look on it from the operator side, this is a huge reduction of the income from that flight because nobody want to fly empty airplanes. And again, there is huge limitation regarding time. With this malfunction slide, airplane can fly only few cycles. So yes, that slide was 100% fixed on the next uh, possibility because nobody want to fly empty airplane. So as you can see, the impact for the flight can be huge if you fly with a malfunction system. So that's why we try to fix everything as soon as possible. Now let's take a look who can release such a problem. Well, in Europe, it means that you need to be a holder of EASA Part 66 license. And how to gain such a thing? You need to work at least five years in aviation. You need to pass several exams to gain modules, which is uh, aerodynamics, mathematics, physics, uh, electric, electronic, digital technologies, propulsion, and many, many others. Then you need to have a logbook. This logbook is basically document in which you store all the jobs which you perform. And from each other chapter, there are few tasks which you need to perform under supervision of instructor. And only after all this, you need to go to your civil aviation authority and request license. Then they're gonna review everything and most probably you will get your EASA license. After that, you need to pass type certification, which means that you need to go to school for at least six weeks, where they're gonna teach you all about each part of the airplane and how it works. After that, you have 
at least two weeks of practice where again they're gonna practically explain how this component work on their plane when you pass all this and if this will be your first entry in the license you need to pass something what is called OGT or on job training again you will get another logbook with the tasks which you need to pass on that exact airplane with the instructor who will be on your side during this process this process can take up to one year maybe longer depends how quick are you and how many tasks are available on your fleet when you get all this you will get your practical certificate your theoretical certificate and your logbook you can again visit civil aviation authority and ask for first entry in your license that was the first part so you get your license with airplane type inside of it and then you want to start working for some company which means that you need to get company authorization how to get that uh, company will ask you for your certificates for your uh, part 66 license and then you need to pass something which is called assessment where you will meet with a person from quality and most probably technical assessor they're gonna ask you about your knowledge of the airplane and of course about the company procedures and where you can find them and how to work on their airplane when you pass all this only then you can start to work on the airplane and release airplane to service so no it's not some random mechanic you need to have a huge background to be able to dispatch any problem or sign airplane back to service that was more or less all about europe now what about america they have their own certification and to be allowed to fix airplanes you need to gain something what is called amp license or airframe and propulsion license which is released by FAA or Federal Aviation Administration and how to gain that as a first you need to meet education requirements and how to do that you have several options first one is to attend of FAA approved aviation maintenance technical school and enroll their program which takes from 18 to 24 months during which the subject will gonna cover both uh, propulsion and airframe as an alternate you can gain your experience through the practice under supervision of uh, certified maintenance technicians this process will take you either 18 months to gain uh, airframe or propulsion experience or altogether 30 months after completing education and practical requirements you can start with the testing and they are in three forms you need to pass written tests which will cover general knowledge of uh, airframe and power plant then oral and practical during which they will assess your ability to perform maintenance and troubleshooting tasks and when you pass all those three gates you can receive your AMP license which will allow you to work on the airplane in US. Whenever you will get your license in your hand, you can apply for first job as aircraft mechanic. And whenever you'll be hired, company will provide you with something what is called general familiarization. And uh, what does it mean? You will get general overview of system, of airplane to which you are assigned to. And thanks to this general familiarization and all documentation which is available for you, you can sign off task cards and release aircraft to service. Of course, this was a very simplified explanation. Since I don't have a FA license and I never really tried to get one, since I work under EASA and I live and work in Europe, but at least I hope this gave you an overview how to get license in United States. As you can see there is a lot of work behind everything in aviation and we still try to keep it a safest form of transport in the world and I hope that it will stay that way for a very long period of time because every engineer out there is trying to ensure that you will have a safe flight. Well that's all from my side, my name is Tomasz, this was Aircraft Maintenance with Zeto and I hope that I will see you next one, bye.